Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my full Loki Season 2 Episode 4 video. There were a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references, so we'll break it all down. Just RIP to the entirety of the MCU multiverse, like all of reality just collapsed. We had a good run guys, everybody pack it up, we'll start again with like another big giant franchise of superhero movies. No joke, there are a lot of ramifications for the end of this episode, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. There are still two, two episodes left in Season 2, and Kevin Feige even commented on Loki Season 3. That's why the ending is so interesting, because like, ooh, RIP, all of reality, the entire multiverse, all timelines just in general just broke down. How are they going to save themselves in the last two episodes? How do you save yourself when all of reality is completely gone, and it's just this void of nothingness? But before we get too deep into the weeds on it, careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet just because we have to talk about everything. Just starting at the beginning of the episode, working our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments, starting with the episode title, The Heart of the TVA, which is both a reference to Miss Minutes and the temporal core, like the actual timeline itself here in the loom. Miss Minutes is the metaphorical heart of the TVA because she has administrator access to all its systems and she's more advanced than Ultron, so literally she can control everything in the TVA from the ground up. During the episode, she winds up sabotaging everything till they're able to kick her out by rebooting the systems. In the temporal core here, where they're repairing the loom, is the literal heart of the TVA. I actually think that their solution to fixing the Miss Minutes problem by rebooting the TVA systems completely is going to be the solution that they use to fix all the timelines in episodes 5 and 6, like rebooting the timelines, so to speak. There are a lot of people that actually wondered if we'd ever actually travel to like the very beginning of the timeline because so much of Loki season 1 was all about traveling to the very end of the timeline where he who remains, Citadel at the end of time was. But he basically implied that by killing him it would cause the timeline to reboot and I think we're just seeing a version of that play out during Loki season 2, like the timeline itself will have to be rebooted, so to speak. Who knew that fixing all of reality would be as simple as fixing your router in your internet at home? I'm back. Okay, try this. Unplug it, plug it back in, and remember, we care. Rule number one of troubleshooting. Unplug it and plug it back in. That literally looks like what's happening in Loki episode 4, 5, and 6. Like they unplug the timelines, like everything is gone, the void of nothingness before the Big Bang, then boom, everything comes back again. We kind of saw a version of that during Loki season 1, episode 6 in the finale. Like you see all of creation just collapsing and then like a version of the Big Bang happens again, like the timeline restarts again and heads into that black hole. You see the sacred timeline heading to the end of time. In fact, I think that's the reason why they start the episode with that special version, the intro, where you rush. Like you hear the rushing sound as you rush into the Marvel Studios logo and into the timeline. But in the actual opening scene, the version of the timeline that we see is, is exists now with all the different branches going all over the place. There's supposed to be infinite branches now, like theoretically infinite timelines. The opening scene is also a reference to the opening scene from Loki Season 1 Episode 6, like it's a callback to that because you're kind of doing the same thing where you travel through the timeline to the end of time, but in this version it basically picks up right in the moments that we left off in Episode 3. Miss Minutes explains the rest of Renslayer's backstory in the thing, quote unquote, that she was going to reveal to her the secret that she wouldn't like is basically what we thought in Episode 3, like the big theory is that she just tell her the rest of her origin story. Miss Minutes basically gives her like an instant replay, like a home movie of the events that Loki listened to on the tape during episode one, like the exact same conversation, but in video form. Professor Rinsley, you are quite a marvel. I will be proud to lead with you. You made a difference in this war. You made a difference in this war. Thank you for being on my team. The way they explain her backstory is that Renslayer was he who remains general during the Kang multiverse war. He had this giant army working for him like Kang usually does in the comics. As they're talking, they're finishing the construction of the TVA. It sounds like they've been building it for a while and they're just putting the finishing touches on it right now. So his army were made up of all the people who became TVA agents and are working at the TVA in present day like Casey was also part of his army. Mobius was part of his army during the Kang multiverse war meaning that he would have pulled them from different parts of the timeline where they originally came, like their original lives, many years before the creation of the TVA. This is actually a pretty critical detail because during Loki season 1 they kind of made it seem like most of the TVA agents were taken after the creation of the TVA, like they became variants at some point after the TVA was created, then the TVA either pruned them or turned them into more agents. But the way they talk about them during the flashback here, they make it sound like everybody, Mobius for example, became part of He Who Remains Army long before the creation of the TVA. 
And the other really important detail here, too, is when they're talking to each other, he who remains starts talking about for all time, always, he almost sounds kind of regretful, whereas Renslayer seems like she is super hardcore. Like, he who remains seems way more sentimental during their conversation, the way he's talking about things, than Renslayer does. Like, she seems like she's all about the business. Like, all right, time to go back to the TVA. Let's do this. When she returns to the TVA and he activates Miss Minutes, she references the chess games for which she was created, as she talked about in previous episodes. Like, originally, you just created me as a robot to play chess with. And he orders her to wipe everyone's memories at the TVA, explaining how everybody forgot about him and started believing in the timekeepers. When he says Protocol 42, that's also a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide. It's also a reference to Episode 2 when Mobius was looking in the TVA journal and there was a reference to Protocol 42. Is that on page 7? No, no, no. Section 42 should match with the system. Turns out Protocol 42 is just the protocol to wipe everyone's minds. The other interesting thing during their conversation is that Miss Minutes seems kind of reluctant to do that. Like, are you sure you want to wipe everyone's memories? She seems so much more twisted in present day. She leaves to execute that order, and he apologizes to all of them, to Renslayer, and pretty much everyone else, too. And he seems very regretful about what he's doing. The reason why I think he did that is to help the TVA function more efficiently, because if everybody remembered everything about their lives from before, it would just lead to further problems. Like, eventually, people would be more like Hunter X5. I want to go back to my life. Like, I've lived here for eons. I want to go back. So during season one, when Loki and Mobius were joking about how long they'd actually been there, like, how long have you worked in the TVA? And Mobius is like, I have no idea. Time works differently here. In reality, he'd worked there for eons. So if He Who Remains had not wiped their minds or didn't wipe their minds on a regular basis, slowly people would just start to break down, like the TVA would stop functioning the way that it's supposed to. And it also sounds like he's kind of regretful about having to kill all of his different variants and literally killing trillions and trillions of other people in all the other timelines that he erased. They go pretty deep into that idea during this episode, like they want to save all the new branch timelines because it would theoretically mean saving trillions of people. Like Loki tells Sylvie that she's a hero because she saved Victor Timely, he's going to save the other timelines, and that means she helped to save trillions and trillions of people in all these different branches. So when Sylvie's talking about killing Hugh Remains and how he wasn't afraid to die like Victor Timely was very afraid to die, please don't kill me. I think what they're implying in this flashback is that he felt remorseful about what he did and he felt like he deserved to die. Present day Renslayer also seems kind of mad when she learns all this too. Like she feels like she did all the work of running the TVA and protecting the sacred timeline, but he who remains took all the credit but wasn't doing any of the work. She's kind of taking the wrong lessons from this, like she's seeing things and taking the wrong things out of it. But now that we know some more of the backstory, if you remember in episode one, when Loki time slips to the beginning of the TVA and he runs into everyone, but they don't remember him because they haven't met him yet, but there's still the statue of He Who Remains, that might be from like right before everybody gets their minds wiped or is in the process of getting their minds wiped because He Who Remains hasn't finished creating the timekeepers and replacing that statue of himself with the timekeepers. Miss Minutes then pitches Renslayer on an alliance, predictably, that they take over the TVA and rule all time together like we don't need a Kang to rule time. We'll see if there's any division in the ranks before the last two episodes are done. Love the way that Victor Timely also enters the TVA after the end of episode 3, like he literally enters in the war room right in front of the statue of himself on the wall, basically, like he sees all the giant versions of his variant's face, he who remains. Yet to imagine him just freaking out like, oh, it's me. Love all the scenes of him being super curious, trying to wander around the hallways, like, no, 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 we need to focus, we have a problem to fix. Then he finds the mural of the Kang Multiverse War, the Timekeepers, and pretty much everything, like the whole dogma of the TVA itself and their history. The reason why Hunter B-15 recognizes him is because Loki spent all of Episode 1 trying to catch everyone up on who Kang was, what the Kang Multiverse War was. But also you remember, this means Hunter B-15 was part of his army, or he who remains army, but had her mind wiped too. There's a lot of really serious stuff, but a lot of comedy in between those serious moments in the episode. So while they're taking him to meet Ouroboros and Casey, they do have a couple funny moments about him getting sidetracked. Like, can I go look at some of these other rooms? Like, this is all fantastic. All the scenes of him trying to work out the time travel logic of it all, like, did I create this in the past or will I create this? And they try to explain to him, no, 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 this was a variant of you, he who remains, that created this. They're very careful in this episode to repeat the idea that he is not he who remains, like he's a completely different person. When he jokes about Chicago being the shadeocracy capital of the world, that's just a callback to him being a confidence trickster, like bilking investors out of money with his prototypes. So the idea is that Chicago is meant to be the capital of the world for tricksters, so he can see a trick coming a mile away. 
Notice he refers to Miss Minutes as the monster clock lady. I think that's pretty accurate. Judge Gamble comes back in Hunter B-15, reminding that they still have General Dox in the holding cells and her agents, and sort of work out the morality of all of these new timelines and what the new mission of the TVA is going to become. Just the whole idea that Loki was talking to Sylvie about, like, we can still have the TVA, the TVA can still be a force for good. There are a couple jokes with Victor Timely being fascinated by the coffee machine. I love the idea, hot chocolate soup. Like, this is an actual retro coffee machine, like it's a real coffee machine that they just use in the episode. I was actually expecting a big twist with it later, but it just turns out that Victor Timely really likes the idea of getting hot coffee from a machine. They have all the funny moments of them meeting each other in Ouroboros' lab, like Victor Timely is a fanboy of Ouroboros, and Ouroboros is a fanboy of Victor Timely, and I love the way that they get into this whole concept too, of the timeline repeating Ouroboros, which is the title of episode one, the snake eating its tail. Your work is based on his work, and his work is based on your work. Exactly which came first. It's like a snake eating its own tail. OB says that he created the TVA guidebook based on the work of Victor Timely, specifically not he remains based on the work of Victor Timely. While Victor Timely says that he developed a lot of his work based on the TVA guidebook created by OB. So the whole idea is how could one influence the other if one didn't exist before the other? It's a bit of a callback to that funny moment that they had in episode one where Loki's talking to OB in the past and then it influences OB in the future. It's also a reference to Loki basically pruning himself like the snake eating its tail, Loki saving himself with the time slipping from episode one, confirming what was going on in that scene. They also make it seem like OB is a little pissed off at Sylvie because she killed He Who Remains, causing all the problems that they're having right now. Like all of reality is threatened because she killed He Who Remains and she seems super proud that she did it. Like, yep, that was me. I definitely did that. There are a couple of funny moments with this model. Like, oh, I just whipped up this tiny little thing with no time at all. It could have been way better. I only put a couple of coats of paint on it. But their plan is basically to make the loom bigger so that they can just handle all the different timelines. Victor Timely then whips out his life's work and confirms what he was talking about in episode three. So the idea is that he had the same problem with his version of the loom and it wasn't big enough to handle all the power. This device is a modifier meant to fix that problem. There are a lot of people after episode three that thought that this was meant to be a reference to his time chair, like his time travel platform during Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. But it's just meant to be a device to modify this, like it's not related to his time travel platform. There are a couple funny moments with the key lime pie, like we keep going back to the key lime pie with Mobius trying to sell Sylvie on the idea, but she's still pissed off because of everything that's happening. She's actually incorrect that Mobius doesn't care about the other branch timelines or learning about his original life on the sacred timeline. He does want to find out. He's just afraid of what that might look like. Early theory right now is that it has something to do with jet skis, and that's why Loki time slipped to the jet ski dealership. They'll probably pay that scene off at some point in one of the last couple of episodes. Maybe Mobius used to work at that jet ski dealership. He definitely sounds like a professor of jet skis. We finally go back to General Dox and Hunter X5 in the holding cell. She makes fun of him for the Zaniac event like, oh, that was real spectacular, wasn't it? He wants to escape and go back to that life. Hunter B-15 seems like she almost winds up winning them over. Like, had Renslayer not shown up and had Miss Minutes not killed them, she might have actually won them over. Sylvie getting lost and accidentally winding up in what she calls pie land, love the way that she describes it too, might just be a quirk of the way the TVA was constructed, like that might be on purpose, purposely leading people to the MC Escher-like construction of the TVA to make it to this pie place. And Loki basically gives her a version of the speech, like the sage wisdom that he gave to Mobius, also eating pie in the previous episodes. He basically tells her the story of the first Thor movie in the sacred timeline version where Odin banished Thor to Earth, how Thor returned being more mature, but Loki didn't recognize that at the time and thought that he'd gone soft mocking him. But the idea is that eventually this Loki grew as a person and realized that Thor had just matured as a person when he came back. Basically likening Thor's experience in the first Thor movie to what Sylvie went through, like her maturing as a character, and that's why she didn't kill Victor Timely, like she grew as a person. She kind of went on a mini version of Loki's arc. There's this big argument that they get into over whether or not the TVA can become a force for good. And when Loki starts talking about how free will is bad almost, like he makes it sound like free will is bad, it actually starts to take a turn. Like, wait a minute, no, 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 that's bad. What are you talking about, Loki? This is probably something that they'll explore in the final two episodes because Loki sounds like he has like 90% of the correct idea. But then when he starts talking about how you can't just leave people alone with their own free will, that actually sounds wrong. Like it sounds like there's going to be some big twist in the final two episodes where he recognizes like, no, 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 everybody just needs to have free will and be able to do whatever they're going to do. 
But when he starts talking about trying to fix what's broken, being harder than just raising things to the ground and starting fresh, that's a bit of a callback to like Thor Ragnarok and also his adventures with his family in like the first Avengers movie. Like he tried to create his own kingdom on Earth rather than fix his relationship with his family. But this whole conversation is meant to show you how much Loki has grown as a person, that he's the person giving this sage wisdom to Sylvie. Like he's giving her something that sounds kind of like a Captain America rousing speech, like this is something that Steve Rogers would be saying to the other Avengers characters. Sylvie saying Loki is bringing Victor Timely behind the curtain is a Wizard of Oz reference, like the man behind the curtain, Victor Timely, or he who remains, was the man behind the curtain. Then it's kind of a moot point because of the way they end the episode, but at the time, Loki suggests that they send Victor Timely back to the 1800s and just monitor him like they would all the other variants. Like, we could protect him, we'll just leave him there in the 1800s. Turns out he's dead now, so they don't have to worry about that. But their whole conversation about the TVA becoming a force for good makes it sound like Loki is going in the direction that he who remains wanted them to go in, like he wanted them to take over for him running the TVA. And that's kind of what Loki's talking about doing. When Sylvie talks about them acting like gods and Loki says we are gods, he's talking about them being the gods of mischief, but also it's kind of a callback to him during Thor Ragnarok pretending to be Odin, pretending to rule over Asgard. Kind of like he plans to rule over the TVA, at least right now it seems like. When Renslayer shows up in the TVA holding cell with Miss Minutes, she confirms she's only been gone for a couple of days or the equivalent of a couple of days. The way that time works in the TVA, it's actually been a little bit longer than that. But Hunter X5 winds up turning to her side when she promises them lives on the sacred timeline because that's what he wanted in the first place. He wanted to go back to his life. Then RIP everyone else because Miss Minutes totally kills them using the same device that Loki was messing with in episode 2. And the real crazy thing about this is that it seems like she sadistically enjoys it, like she's getting excited at watching them die. Now it kind of seems like they're setting her up for some like over the top villainy in the last episode in some crazy death where they completely destroy her. But this finally explains the question, what is that drain for? Why is there a giant drain in a bunch of hoses in this room? It's so that they can wash the remains, like the squished remains of all those people down the drains. Turns out the TVA does stuff like this all the time. Then Miss Minutes basically pays off the title of the episode, The Heart of the TVA, when she enters to all the TVA systems, disabling or basically sabotaging everything. There are a couple of funny moments with Victor Timely just getting really jazzed up over coffee, like, here, have some, let's have this awesome moment, we'll just share some coffee together, some hot chocolate water. But when Hunter X5 prunes this other TVA hunter, he doesn't kill him, he just sends him to the Void Planet. It's just meant to be a reminder, because at the end of the episode, they kind of do the same thing with Renslayer, sending her to the Void Planet. OB figures out what Miss Minutes is doing, sabotaging all the systems. When he says that Mobius had been downloading unauthorized games, that's meant to be a reference back to the first Avengers movie in the Galaga game. That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Mobius thought that they wouldn't notice, but OB did. Love the way Jonathan Majors does his Victor timely too, like when he turns on a dime the minute he enters the war room and sees Renslayer and Miss Minutes like, oh hey, you survived, this is so great, so wonderful. They want to stop him from using his modifier device to fix the sacred timeline because they want to prune all the new branches. Basically threatening to squish him in that same force field from before. Very small little box. Then they start paying off that Loki flash forward the time slipping scene from episode 1 where he jumped forward to the future and sees Sylvie stuck in the elevator like she gets stuck in the elevator here because Miss Minutes invades all the different systems. So if there's any confusion about what's going on when they all meet each other here at the elevator in this moment that we saw in episode one. The Loki wearing the jacket who prunes the other Loki is the older Loki, like the current version of Loki. He winds up pruning the younger version of himself who survives at the end of episode one. That's why after he prunes his younger self, he tells Sylvie, don't worry, I'll explain later, this will all make sense in a little while. Just because Sylvie wasn't around for the events of episode one where they explained how he had to prune himself. Then we find out where the phone call came from and turns out it was just OB down in the temporal core like, hey, what's going on? Why are you taking so long? And they have the funny moment about them reactivating magic, like taking the dampeners offline so they can get rid of missed minutes, but also allowing them to use their magic again. Dampeners that prevent people from using magic at the TVA. We would have to turn that off too. Turn it off! That's why they yell at him like, turn them off because them using magic makes them way more powerful. Love the scene of Victor Timely also trying to delay them in the war room by just rambling on and on about the science behind his technology. Like he stalls them by going full Charlie Day meme board, just going on and on and on. They take Miss Minutes offline. They didn't kill her. They just briefly deactivated her. She'll be back and probably more pissed off than ever. I love the effect too. Like she turns into like a much more primitive clock right before she goes offline. 
And when she tells Victor Timely he'll never become he who remains, even though she makes it sound like she wants to taunt him, like you'll never be as great as him, it's really meant to spurn him on and give him the courage to go out on the platform himself at the end of the episode, even though RIP he winds up dying. It's also meant to be a reminder that Victor Timely is a completely different variant with his own life, makes different choices, and his future will look completely different than he who remains future. Now that the magic's been turned off, they can have that funny scene of Loki and Sylvie versus Hunter X5. Like, shall we have a rematch where she winds up enchanting him to prune Renslayer, sending her to the Void Planet, who we'll find out about in Episode 5. Like, she's still alive. She'll be back. Also as pissed off as Miss Minutes. Victor Timely then uses his temporal aura, like basically his temporal thumbprint, to unlock all the TVA systems down here. Normally you think it'd be a little bit different because he's a variant, so he's from an alternate timeline, so shouldn't his temporal aura be a little bit different? There's a little bit of hand-waving there from Marvel. They do that all the time, especially in big movies. Like, we only have two and a half hours to explain this story, so we're going to hand-wave across a lot of these logical details. But I love the way they end this episode. Like, it's such a WTF kind of cliffhanger. Like, they build with this big swell of hero music for Victor Timely's version of Kang, and then, boom, he turns into spaghetti the instant he steps out on the platform. R.I.P. So the whole idea here is that he didn't get pruned, like he didn't get sent to the Void Planet. He was literally like erased from existence at all points in the timeline. Ouroboros was warning Loki about it during episode one. Like if you don't wind up pruning yourself in time, you'll basically be erased from all existence all across the timeline. Then basically what's happening here is the loom collapses, like you see this big explosion where all of time begins to collapse on itself, meaning that all of reality is collapsing, which is why it goes from that really WTF music and just slams to black, just utter silence in black. That's meant to represent the void of nothingness that is now the MCU multiverse, like there is no sound, no light, nothing. All of existence in the MCU multiverse just ended. This is meant to actually be a pretty accurate representation of what life was like for Null, the god of symbiotes, when he was born before the Big Bang. Like, so, like, he comes from this void of nothingness that existed before the Big Bang. They basically call it utter chaos. It's also the place where the Dark Elves came from, too. There's only one new outro scene. Like, all these different scenes were in the last week episode. The only thing that they've changed were the files. All the files are scenes from episode four. And because Victor Timely died during the episode, this thumb probably belongs to Hunter B-15. There's a scene of Loki running through the hallways. There's a scene of Victor Timely about to put the spacesuit on. There's a flashback of Renslayer with He Who Remains right after the Kang multiverse war. There's a scene of Ouroboros meeting Victor Timely and then a scene of Mobius. And across the rest of the credits, they just have a very anxiety, hair-raising kind of music like, oh crap, what are we going to do now? So the early theory is, like I said, they're going to have to reboot the timeline the same way they rebooted the TVA. Getting back to the whole concept of the Ouroboros with time repeating like this big loop of time. That's why they made so many jokes about it during the episode. Let me know in the comments, though, how do you think that they're going to fix things in episodes 5 and 6? Like, how does everything come back? Maybe, maybe early theory, Loki also time slips to another point in time before this happens. And wherever he winds up slipping to, he winds up being able to change things, preventing this from happening. But the other big question is, do you think this is the last we've seen of Victor Timely's version of Kang, or will we see a completely different variant of Kang in the future episodes? There were a bunch of Easter eggs and references during the episode. If you spotted any that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. My episode 5 trailer video will post this weekend, and my full episode 5 video will post next week after they release it. Click here to watch that video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for all my other Loki episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.